Hi, I'm Ray from the Radio Workshop, where I repair and restore vintage valve radios from the 1940s. My amateur radio call sign is Golf 4 November Sierra Juliet. Welcome to yet another podcast. Here in the UK, it was called the Trawler Band. I believe in America, it was called the Marine Band. I'm talking about the band between frequencies of what, 1.6 something, 1.7 megs, up to I think nearly three megs or even past three megs so roughly two to three megs that was the trawler band there you had all the coast guard stations the ships the fishermen bear in mind the English channel is the it was and still is the busiest shipping lane in the world so you can imagine the trawler band this is before the days of VHF marine radio it was jam-packed I used to listen on 2182 kilohertz that was the calling and distress frequency. Now, obviously, people aren't allowed to transmit on there if they're kind of based on the land. You know, you've got to be bobbing around in a boat at sea. You can't be doing it from your bedroom at home. That's, that's not done. But I heard this chap calling, and he was calling Mayday on 2182, and no one was answering him. So I listened for a while, still no one answered, so I went back to him. Illegal though it was, that I put to one side because this chap was obviously in trouble. I answered him and he heard me. He said, my battery's going. I haven't got much longer to transmit. And he said his prop shaft had gone. By gone, presumably means broken. So he had no power. And he said he was drifting. Now he was a fishing boat. I don't know how big the boat was, but he said he was drifting out to sea. He was off the coast here at Worthing, where I live, and he was calling on 2182, as I said, and no one heard him. So I, I called Night and Radio. I was surprised they didn't come back to me because I'm talking on 2182. I'm surprised they didn't say, who are you? What's going on? So I called Night and Radio on the same frequency, 2182. And I said, there's a fishing vessel in trouble off the uh, Worthing coast. Night and came back to me and said, who are you? They wanted me to identify myself, you know, the name of my vessel. And I told them the truth. I said, I shouldn't be on here. I'm land-based. I just happened to be listening on 2182 and I heard a distress call and no one answered. And the chat was great. He said, OK, what details have you got? And I told him. And he said, can the, the fishing vessel hear me? So I asked the chat. He said, yes, I can hear Knighton. So Knighton Radio asked him questions. And the fishing vessel replied, and of course Knighton couldn't hear, so I relayed to Knighton the answers. I can only think that Knighton Radio couldn't hear him because, well, first of all, he was a very weak signal and he was a lot closer to me than he was to the Isle of Wight, uh, where Knighton Radio was based. Secondly, Knighton Radio have got massive aerial, huge tower, I've been there and seen it, and they would have been receiving a lot of other traffic or, you know, a lot of stuff. So perhaps that's why. I, I must admit, I was surprised that they couldn't hear this chap, even though he was very weak. So anyway, I relayed what the fishing chap was saying back to Night and Radio. And basically Night and Radio said, we're going to get someone out to you, which they did. I listened for a, the next hour or so. They got someone out to him and the bloke was OK. He got a, a tow back to Shoreham, where he'd come from, Shoreham Harbour. The radio officer didn't say anything about I shouldn't be on there or I was a pirate or anything. He just said, thank you very much for your help. Night and out. <laughs> and that was it. So I mean, that, that made my day, not only because I'd helped a chap who was in distress out at sea, but because I'd spoken to Night and Radio, not legally, but kind of with their consent sort of thing. <laughs> that was fantastic. And of course, after that, my, my interest in the trawler band, it just rocketed. When I said that Knighton was obviously hearing a lot of other traffic, bear in mind that at night, on well, between the amateur bands, 160 metres and 80 metres, this is where the trawler band was. Now, you know what? Some of you will know what those bands are like. So imagine Knighton Radio with this huge vertical aerial uh, right on the southern tip of the Isle of Wight. They must have been able to hear things from, well, literally thousands of miles away. Because on those sort of frequencies at night, you can hear, you know, with a, an aerial like that, you can just hear half of the world. I remember even on my 
uh, very, very small aerial in comparison with night. You know, it wasn't an aerial at all. But I heard ships way out in the Atlantic, all over the place, uh, especially Europe, all the Coast Guard stations around Europe, the Mediterranean. Uh, this was in the day, though, of course, I omitted to mention that. This was in the daytime. But even then, with an aerial that like Knighton had, they must have been hearing stuff from hundreds of miles away. I could hear, during the day, I could hear Anglesey Radio up at uh, up in North Wales there. Anglesey would come in, Humber Radio I could hear. Yeah, this was on my sort of pretty poor aerial. So, yeah, I reckon that's why Knighton couldn't hear him. He was a very weak signal to me. And I suppose with all the other traffic going on, Knighton just didn't stand a chance of hearing him. What all the Coast Guards did on the hour and on the half hour, they had a three minute silence. And the idea was everyone shuts up. OK, so the 2182, the frequency is completely dead. And then not just Coast Guards, but ships as well could listen in case there was a weak station calling, you know, someone in distress calling. That seemed to work quite well, but there was always one idiot who'd start calling on. You know, night and radio, night and radio, this is so-and-so. And night and would go back. Three minutes silence. You know? <laughs> I got the impression that sometimes they'd like to swear at these people. For goodness sake, haven't you got a clock? Can't you see what the time is? In fact, the ship's clocks in the radio rooms had a, was it red or green sector marked three minutes after the hour and three minutes after the half hour which was the, the silence period for listening. Many years ago, decades in fact, I worked for a marine electronics company. We worked on radar, ship to shore stuff, uh, echo sounders, sonar, all that sort of equipment. And I was down at, was it Poole in Dorset or Southampton? I can't remember. I was on this chap's yacht, don't you know? Chap with a lot of money. I was installing an MF rig, which was the marine band. I set it all up for him, loaded up the aerial, on each channel there were various channels crystal controlled and he said i'll be i'll be sailing across the atlantic don't you know i want to call anglesey radio and i said yes okay anglesey is on there you know channel so and so whatever it was it was because they had you called them on 2182 the coast guards but then they had their working frequencies so you didn't chat on the on the calling and distress anyway this chap said you call anglesey now so i can see it works and i said uh, you won't get Anglesey now. It was the middle of the day. I said, you won't get Anglesey now. The propagation isn't right. You know, you probably get them at night, but not in the day. And don't blind me with science and give me all that rot. <laughs> all this sort of... So I said, well, it's not rot. It's... <laughs> I know I said previously I could hear Anglesey during the day. That wasn't all day, every day. You know, there were times when I could hear Anglesey. But he was most annoyed. He said, when I'm out in the mid-Atlantic, I shall hold you personally responsible if I can't contact Anglesey Radio. I couldn't say anything to him, could I? But uh, anyway, when I got back to uh, where I worked, the chap said, uh, the boss, he said, we've had a phone call, a complaint. I explained what had happened. So that was quite funny. And I was thinking about this chap. I imagined him out in the middle of the Atlantic in his yacht try to call Anglesey and thinking of me. While I was on his yacht, I mentioned that his aerial needed some attention. And he said, oh, well, you, you can get up there and sort that out. Oh, I don't do heights. I can't stand on a chair. And I said, no, I'm sorry, I, I can't do that. You know, that's not my department. And he said, oh, I'll send my wife up there later. <laughs> and I just imagined this chap say, come on, old girl, cut up the mast. There we are. Happy days. <laughs> I had to go out to, I believe it was Hailing Island, to pick up a, a transmitter receiver from a chap's, uh, a smallish sort of yacht. And I had to get, a, there was this jetty, and I had to go out on this rowing boat. Now, I can't swim. I wasn't actually very good working on boats. I couldn't do heights up the mast. I couldn't swim. So <laughs> anyway, I went out in this small rowing boat. It was only a few feet to pick up the transmitter. He was going to pass it over to me. What is it they say? I came alongside, as they say. I parked next to his boat and he was kind of hovering up the top with this thing balanced on, on the rail. He was nowhere near me and he said, hang on a minute, I'll come along to meet you. And he dropped it, splash, in the sea. I tried not to laugh because it wasn't funny. Actually, it was hilarious because he was swearing. He wasn't blaming me. Luckily, a chap was walking along the shore 
and he'd seen what had happened and he, he was in sort of swimming trunks and he he came out and he managed to get this trap the water wasn't that deep he managed to get the transmitter off the seabed and kind of haul it up to me and I put it in the rowing boat <laughs> of course it was ruined absolutely ruined but that was the end of that there's nothing you can do with something that's been in sea water like that it's no good washing it down it was full of coils IF transformers uh, all sorts of equipment that you just can't drown in seawater so that was the end of that he ended up buying a new uh, radio altogether for, from us actually from the company I worked for I went to Shoreham Harbour Saturday it was I didn't work Saturdays but the boss said look can you go and stick this radar the one that I'd done in the workshop stick it back in his boat to shut him up he's been going on and on so I went over to Shoreham I went on his boat and I, I put the radar set back in the thing what is it, the cabin up front? I hate boats. I don't know why I ever did that job. So I put the radar in. I said, there we are, all working. And he looked, oh, oh that's, he looked at the screen. That's, that's the, not the gasometer there. I said, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know the area. No, no, no the gasometer, that, that says it's two miles. It's at least four miles away. So I said, well, I don't know. Sorry. He said, well, it's not calibrated correctly. I said, well, I calibrated this one myself, so I know it's correct. As it happens, a chap was walking past the jetty thing or whatever, what on the marine, what is it? I don't know what, these bits of wood that go out in the sea. And this uh, this chap said, uh, uh, Charles, come look at this. This, this Charles chap came aboard and um, he said, oh, oh, this chap's trying to tell me that that's the, the gasometer. And I said, I'm not trying to say anything. I don't know where the gasometer is. Anyway, this Charles looked and he said, yeah, that's right. That's correct. You've got your settings all correct on there. So this chap looked at me and he said, oh, all right, then off you go. And that was that. I, don't, I didn't like the boats and I didn't like the people. Shall I tell you about the dredger at Shoreham Harbour? I used to have to go over there about once a fortnight. They had a valve radio. Would you believe it used valves? Shows how far back I'm going. And the valve heaters, the dredger was shaking like mad. And the valve heaters would just sort of shake themselves to bits in this radio. So I go over about once a fortnight. And it was only certain valves in there. I'd stick sort of two or three valves in, job done, and I'd go back in a couple of weeks' time. One morning I had to go over there, and the boss said, oh, I'll come with you. So I went to my own car. We're driving along, we're getting towards Shoreham, and I had a radio in the car. He thought it was amateur band uh, radio, you see. So I picked up the microphone, and I said, uh, Shoreham Dredger, was it Dredge Ada, they call it, Dredge Ada, Dred Ada, Engineer. And my boss is next to me. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm calling the dredger. They were on Channel 11. He said, you can't do that. I said, why not? Anyway, the dredger came back and he said, hello, mate. Uh, he said, we're at uh, so-and-so, so come round. Because there were two ways into the harbour, where well, there still are. And it's quite a distance. You either go in one way or you drive a sort of a mile or more on. And you go right the way round and come in the other way. Look on the map if you're interested, which you're probably not. So I always used to call the dredger and say, which way do you want me to go? And uh, anyway, that was that. So the chap said, yeah, come round to so-and-so and we'll send the boat out for you. This was another little rowing boat. So my boss said, you can't do that. And I said, well, why not? I've got to, I've got to get to the dredger. I want to know where they are. I'm not going to drive all the way. No, 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 you, can, you can't do that. You can't go on the marine band, the VHF marine band in your car. I said, well, I just have. He said, well, I know, but how he was all flustered. Oh, goodness me. So I parked the car. I had to go down with my, my sort of toolbox, not only a few tools in it and a pocket full of valves. I had to climb down this vertical ladder down the harbour wall, all covered in barnacles and seaweed, get in this rowing boat thing. Bear in mind I couldn't swim. They'd take me over to the dredger, which was fantastic. It was steam driven. He showed me around it on more than one occasion, steam engine going, oh, fantastic. And I climb up this ladder right up to the top. What's that? It's not the bridge, is it? It was a kind of thing up the top. And if you looked out the window, you could see all the buckets coming up. And the whole thing was vibrating and shaking like mad. You, know, you could barely sort of get hold the valves still to put them into the bases. As I say, once a fortnight I had to do that. Uh, and my boss, he, do you know, he went on about that for several weeks afterwards. You shouldn't have that radio in the car. You really shouldn't have that radio in your car. Goodness me, that wasn't pirating, was it? Or was it? If my boss had known that from my sort of workshop, my radio shack at home, 
I used to chat to the fishing boats on the trawler band, uh, you know, two point whatever megs. There were certain channels put by certain frequencies where the boats could chat to each other. I used to give them a shout. Hi, yeah, hey Fred, how you doing? What are you catching today? What, you know, what's it like? Any good out there? And they chat back. Of course, my boss didn't know that. He'd have, uh, I don't know what he would have done. I had a complete breakdown, I would imagine. Going back uh, even further before I was with this company, I had a 19 set on the back seat of my car with, that's the army gear, with the rotary converter, the power supply, everything all run from the car battery. And I had, you know, you see on these tanks and Land Rovers, these 12 foot whip aerials, you know, the original big rubber base. I put one of those in the middle of the car roof. I drilled a hole through the car roof, brought the wire down. I was parked on the seafront, chatting to the fishermen on the trawler band and the cops drew up behind me and they came and had a look, you know, hello mate, we've often seen you driving around and uh, down at the station, you know, we talk about this on your car, you know, what's it all about? So I said, oh, it's, I turned the, the radio off, I said, it's, uh, it's amateur radio. I didn't say I was chatting to the fishing boats. I said, it's amateur radio, well, which it could have been, couldn't it? 80 metres, uh, 40 metres on a 19 set. But these, these uh, two cops there were, they were very friendly and very interested. They saw the gear on the back seat. And they were, Is that wartime stuff? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, 1940s. Anyway, they drove off in the end and I carried on chatting to the fishermen. Just going back to my boss and the Marine Electronics Company, we went down to Southampton and we were, I was lugging the toolbox. We were going to fit this new VHF radio on a, on a yacht, uh, this millionaire's yacht. So I'm lugging the couple of tool boxes along the jetty and here's a head of me striding along with it. It was Sea Voice, it was made by Sea Voice. New piece of kit, quite expensive in its day. I'm going back a long time. He's striding along the jetty in front of me towards this huge yacht and he tripped on a plank or something, sticking up a little bit. He didn't go in the water, but the VHF radio that was under his arm, splash. <laughs> glug 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 it was deep water as well very deep water and that was the end of that I mean I couldn't help laughing I looked the other way and pretended I hadn't noticed at first I just was looking towards the shore and I could hear him swearing and I looked back round I said oh, you, you okay Don and he said I've just dropped the sea voice <laughs> in the water and I honestly I I've never had such a job not to laugh he was a funny chap he came into the workshop one morning and uh, I'd been chatting to this fisherman on the radio. You know, we had aerials at the workshop, marine aerials, and it was on uh, on VHF. And I'd been chatting to this fisherman about his radio, actually. He had some problems with it. And uh, Don came in, you know, the boss, he came into the workshop. He said, what was that? Were you talking to someone on the radio? I said, no, no, no. no. He said, yes, you were. Because <laughs> I used to mess him about. He said, who was that? I said, oh, it's just one of the fishermen. He's going to bring his radio and he's got a problem with it. You can't talk to the fisherman. You shouldn't be talking to the fisherman from the workshop. And we'd had all this when I talked to the dredger on the radio in my car. But he was a funny chap. We had this radio in, an MF radio, trawler band type thing. Nothing particularly expensive, but quite a nice radio, transmit and receive. But it had got too many problems with it. It needed a lot of work and it was ageing a little bit. He said, it's just scrap, so it's got to go in the tip. So I said, well, could I have it? Could I take it home? You know, it might be something for me to play with and possibly even get it going. Oh, no, 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 it's got to go in the skip, he said. Uh, you know, we can't have that. You know, you can't take customers' radios. I said, yes, but if it's going in the skip... Anyway, I didn't argue with him. Uh, that night we locked up, up past five, and everyone went home. So about eight o'clock I drove back there, and the skip was just in the in the public domain. Now, there's a there's an expression... It was just round the back in the public domain. So I took the radio out of the skip and put it in my car. After a considerable amount of work and a considerable amount of time, I eventually got it all going. I, I completely restored the whole thing. And it was a lovely piece of equipment, even though it was old. Really nice piece of equipment. And of course, I used to chat to the fishermen on it from my home. As far as I remember, there weren't many pirates on the trawler band. I don't mean pirates out in a ship at sea, pirate ships. <laughs> I mean, people like me. No, not like me. Mine wasn't so much pirating because I was in the trade, so I was part of it, part of all the seafaring things going on. But uh, there was a lot to listen to on the trawler band. 
all AM, of course, in those days, amplitude modulation. It was great fun. As I've said earlier, especially at night, you could hear things all around the world. Fantastic band. It's still a fantastic band. I do have a listen now and then. There is the odd ship, believe it or not, on single side band, upper side band. There's the odd ship just having a chat um, to a Coast Guard miles away. But I think the only Coast Guard left near where I am on the south of England, there's Ostend. They're still going. I believe Humber Radio on 1925 kilohertz upper side band. There are a few down the Mediterranean area. If you have a listen, 1.6 megs, uh, yeah, 1.6 onwards. Just have a tune round. You'll need a fairly decent aerial. And of course, you won't need a lot of noise, which there is on all bands these days. There we are. I'll end the podcast here. I hope you've enjoyed listening to the podcast as much as I've enjoyed making it. See you next time. Thanks for listening again. Bye bye for now.